licensed clinical psychologist and key opinion leader in the field of psychology and motivation. And now, Dr. Stephen Wall. Okay, so I want to thank you guys for coming today. Um, I just also want to point out how unique this is for a pharmaceutical company to have a mental health professional here today. Um, that's something that you rarely, if ever, see. You rarely, if ever, see any pharmaceutical company acknowledging the fact that the patient's mind, the patient's emotions affect how not only they respond to their medication, but how they respond to what's going on in their life. And you guys don't need me to tell you, any of you who are out there um, you know, dealing with MS, you know the stress involved with this type of, of, of challenge in your life can definitely affect how not only your medication works, but how, how much hope you feel. So Terry brought up some good points that I'm gonna to touch on too. Um, but I wanna talk about why we're here, okay? I know on the surface it may appear that we're here for a talk on Abagio. It may be here to you know, meet some friends, to have a nice lunch. I wanna offer a different frame to you guys, okay? I wanna offer a frame that you're not giving up. You're not giving up. You're here today to say there's hope, there's gotta be a way for me to deal with this and I, I don't want that to pass by. That you're here because part of you feels there's something I can do to manage this. And we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about something called mindfulness. And I don't know, have any of you guys heard of mindfulness? Okay, so you know, no, okay. Well, I'm gonna give you the, the Reader's Digest version and then I'm gonna walk you through not only a meditation, um, but also a body relaxation exercise. But why is mindfulness important? That's one of the things we want to talk about. Just to give you some background on me in the intro, I've been working with clients in multiple clinical settings for 20 years. I've worked with people from schools, I've worked with hardened criminals, I've worked with, in all areas of psychology. And mindfulness is one of the key components that I work with my clients on. Why? Well, let's look at the opposite of mindfulness. Mindlessness. Who advocates mindlessness as a way of life? <laughs> Yeah, there you go, there you go. But, the, but that's the point. If you really think about mindlessness, who is gonna say, oh yeah, great, that's a great way to, that's a great way to op, uh, operate my life. Mindfulness is an, uh, the opposite of that. Mindfulness is the idea that the more you're present, the more you're centered in the moment, the more you're gonna be able to not only experience the world around you, but you're gonna be able to experience your own thoughts and emotions. So from a psychological point of view, as a psychologist, Mindfulness is the idea of thinking about my thinking. What am I thinking about? How am I feeling? These are concepts that we don't really learn in school because we're not really taught them as we go through our, our daily life. We're not actually thinking about how we're thinking. Now, why is that important? Well, exactly. If we're not aware of how we're thinking, negative thoughts just permeate through our mind like Terry talked about. Who remembers the first time they got diagnosed? That wave of fear that comes over you as you begin thinking about, oh, now where's this gonna lead? These are things that are affecting the way our body responds. So I'm gonna take a quick poll. Who, who in the audience has been to a dentist? Okay, now watch this. Who's been to a psychologist? Oh, excellent. Excellent, that's great to see. Because this is another thing we need to address. <clears throat> this ridiculous idea of a mental health stigma. This idea that there's something wrong with our negative thoughts and emotions, our depression, our sadness, our fears, our anxieties. This is what is affecting the world at large, is people don't want to admit that yes, I have issues. Who doesn't have issues in this room? <laughs> exactly. Everyone, myself included, everyone has issues. But who talks about them? Who's comfortable going to their care provider or, or their friend or their fa or family and saying, I'm really depressed, I'm down, I don't feel good? This is what is affecting the course of MS symptoms. Stress is the number one cause of a progression of, mental, of, of your symptoms when it comes to MS. 
So what do we, what do we want to talk about today? Mindfulness. Mindfulness is about being present in the moment and awareness of your mind and body. Now why is that important? Why is it important to be aware of your mind and your body? Because you guys are struggling with a, symptom, a cluster of symptoms that is going to affect how you feel on a daily basis. So you need to be conscious of that and be connected to not only how you're feeling, but not carried away by your feeling. Meaning that if I'm down, I don't need to allow that to ruin my day. So part of what we're going to be working on is about staying curious and open without judging how we're feeling. Why is that important? We don't want to judge how we're feeling because a lot of times when, we, when we're down or when we feel depressed or whatever, the first thing we start doing is beating ourselves up. We start telling ourselves, oh no, this is going to ruin my day. And that just snowballs and snowballs and snowballs. So what we want to do is we want to be committed to mindfulness and use it as a daily practice. And I'm going to walk you through different symptoms of that, different uh, exercises we can do with that. So I'm going to do a little uh, quick little quiz with you. Uh, is it, myth or fact? Mindfulness can benefit your physical health. What do you guys think? Absolutely. Study after study. And by the way, whenever you go to these types of events and you hear someone like me speaking, please look this stuff up. I think somebody mentioned going to Google. Type in mindfulness and MS and you will be amazed by some of the studies that are coming up where they actually have done studies and found that people who practice these types of techniques actually find a decrease in the way their symptoms are progressing. Care providers out there, the stress that you're experiencing that you're not talking about to other people. That's another excellent way that mindfulness can be used. So, in a relationship, people have, both people have to practice mindfulness. Um, myth or fact, what do you think? Actually, myth. If one person alone is, is practicing mindfulness, they will, that will affect the way they interact with their, provide, their care provider, with their physician, with themselves. So let's see another one. Myth or fact, mindful parenting can improve the way you relate to your, your uh, child. Absolutely, and as somebody who waited until he was 53 to have his first kid, uh, I've learned this because it's absolutely true. When you, and I wish I brought some pictures because I would have brought some pictures too. But absolutely, I, I find it when I'm just earlier today, we, you know, we, we, we booked into the hotel, the room wasn't ready, and my son was, uh, had a nap the whole way up, we were driving from Tampa, and me being able to check in with how I'm feeling has a way of affecting how I react to him. So what I want you guys to think about is this is another tool for you to use in your arsenal to deal with MS, okay? Practicing mindfulness only involves yoga or meditation. Exactly. You guys are smart. Exactly. Mindfulness can be used in all areas of your life in anything you do. And I'm going to go through the exercises with you here soon. So, what are the benefits of mindfulness? Staying present. Okay, why is that important? Why do you think staying present is important when you're dealing with MS? Anybody? Because I would think that things before, or things you think is going to happen in the future, could then mess up what's happening right now. Absolutely, absolutely. And part of relapsing MS is what's the one thing we do when we know we have a disease, so to speak? We start getting too far ahead. We start talking to other people. We start thinking of the worst case scenario. We start going on YouTube. And the next thing you know, we're anticipating we're going to end up like this or we're going to end up like that. Staying present in the moment is a key component of why um, mindfulness can help you. It can improve your well-being, reduce your stress. Stress is a key, like I said before, I want you guys to please go home and look up how stress interacts with the symptoms of MS. They're finding stunning um, um, results in studies where they're seeing two groups of people one practices mindfulness, the other one doesn't. The symptom progression slows down. The way they relate to themselves, the way they feel about themselves changes through these uh, techniques. Increases your self-esteem. What's another symptom of, of having any, any, any illness? You start getting down in, on yourself. You start putting yourself down. You start feeling like a burden to people. Again, mindfulness can be a key component to, of that. Create a, uh, gaining a better ability to cope with by, and by accepting things. 
Who, when they found out they had um, uh, MS, wh how difficult was that to accept? Still difficult, right? And that is a key component of what these types of techniques will find. I can't impress upon you enough. Every patient I work with, and I was telling a gentleman earlier, I work five days a week, I see sometimes eight to ten back-to-back -back clients a day, and every single one of them, we involve mindfulness. Thinking about your thinking is a key component to any kind of change. If you think about it, let's take the idea of racism. Racism, nobody on this planet is born a racist, okay? We are taught racism. We're also taught other things like self-hate, unacceptance, fear. Terry talked about fear. The fear we feel when we're experiencing this disease is a key component of what my, um, um, uh, mindfulness can help. So let's say, let's imagine if you want for one second we have two racists, okay? And I love using racism in, as an example because there are no born racists. Racism is a taught thing. So let's say on one hand we have a racist who doesn't want to change. And on the other hand, we have a racist that does want to change, okay? The racist who wants to change, who is thinking about why he's a racist or she's a racist, will absolutely be able to change. And that's the key thing about mindfulness. Mindfulness gives you the ability to stop in the moment and say, why am I hating this person? Why am I judging this person? You can do that to yourself. Why am I hating myself? Why am I judging myself? That's the key thing about mindfulness. It makes you aware of how you're thinking. What's your relationship with yourself like? Huh, you hear that? I heard that. Yeah. What's your relationship with yourself like? Everyone talks about what's your relationship with your wife, your husband, your kids, and that's all good. That's called interpersonal psychology. What I like to help my clients focus on is intra personal psychology, like an interstate between states, intrastate is within you. What's your relationship with yourself like when you have MS? Do you hate yourself? How many of, what's that? Great, that's a key component to this, is your relationship with yourself will affect how your course, how your symptoms progress, okay? So, it's chronic illness, it's unpredictable, um, so it may be hard to cope with unexpected challenges in your, in your life, feeling overwhelmed and endanger your emotional and mental health. Do you know that about 40 or 50 years ago, if you'd walked into your doctor's office, and your doctor would have been a man, of course, no offense, <laughs> um, and you would have said, you know, I think the stress in my life is giving me heart disease, I think the stress in my life is giving me migraines, you know what that doctor would have said to you? What's that? Crazy. Exactly. You'd be crazy to say that. Think of that. That's 40, 50 years ago. They used to think the, the mind and the body has no connection. Now, the whole paradigm has shifted into this idea that the way your thoughts and emotions, how you react to your thoughts and emotions, affect your body. This isn't new age gobbledygook. I see this every day. I have some clients who, have, who, who feel like they can't go on, they've given up. Other clients are motivated. That absolutely, that attitude will absolutely affect how you deal with MS. And if you're young and you've been diagnosed with MS, that's even more scary. Because now what are you thinking? Oh, when I end up into my 40s, what's gonna happen? And that type of attitude will absolutely affect the way your body feels. Earlier we talked about the placebo effect. Does everyone know what the placebo effect is, by the way? Okay, well real quick, the placebo effect is when they do a medication trial, some people are given the medication and some people are not given the medication, but they think they're given the medication and then they test how the medication works or not. And as you saw in the, in the presentation, a lot of people respond to the placebo, the non-medication, as though it's the actual medication. Now why is that? Belief. Exactly, and we're not talking about necessarily a religious belief in God, we're talking about the idea of believing affects how your body responds. Has anyone heard of the nocebo effect? No? Okay, well the nocebo effect is, get this, they've actually done studies where they've given people their actual medication but told them it was a sugar pill. And guess what happens a lot of times? The medication stops working. 
No seatbelt. Now, why is that? Exactly. That's why I am here as a licensed clinical psychologist to tell you, belief affects how you feel. If you believe MS is going to debilitate you, kill you, end you up in these worst cases and scenarios, even if that's true, that is going to weaken you to deal with that down the road. They did a placebo knee surgery once. Yeah, no, look this all up when you go home. Type in placebo knee surgery. So how'd they do that? They had a group of people that had the same type of debilitating knee pain. Not like I, I injured my knee in a car accident, but just I'm getting older or my knee hurts. So they put them all in a group. They had an actual procedure. They hard sold them on this. They, oh, you know, we're getting great results. You got, this is free. We're, 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 we're really excited about it. Great. Everyone had everything identical, everything. Everyone had the operation, the incision, but only half the group had the procedure and the other half only had the incision. And, and the people who did the study got a lot of flack for this. But the results were staggering. Even the people who didn't have the procedure when they were interviewed six weeks later after rehab, how's your knee pain? Eh. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Miracle. Exactly. With no procedure done. Now, why is that? Belief. Because you believed there was hope. You believed there was a way to deal with it. And that's why you guys are here. I know the food's good and I know the drug's promising. Absolutely. But you're here because you have not given up. And that's a key component to recovery here. Yes, sir? Yeah. Most, most of my people, they know. Whatever, you know, I try to make it, but I just tell people, you know, they ask, what's wrong with you? I think they said, I'm not a pimp, but I walk on the limb. Nice. <laughs> and that's the attitude. And even, even if his knee gets worse, his attitude will carry him through whatever's coming in the end, okay? So, thank you, sir, by the way. So, which one of these isn't true? Mindfulness meditation can increase compassion. At least three, uh, three 20 minute sessions of mindfulness meditation can significantly reduce pain. True mindfulness can only be obtained through daily meditation. Well, I went too fast, sorry. <laughs> They're all different. Thank you, see. But that's the one that isn't true. Everyone thinks that mindfulness can only be obtained through daily meditation. I'm gonna quickly talk to you guys about what meditation is and isn't before we do it. Everyone thinks that meditate, and I know you're, it must be weird, oh, this guy's a psychologist, he's talking about meditation. Meditation is one of the most important aspects of what I encourage all my clients to do. Do you think I encourage them to sit in a lotus position and, and, and chant? No, that's not what meditation is. Meditation simply is the idea of following and concentrating on your breath. That's, there's actually a meditation called Vipassana meditation that's used in India. They're using it in Indian jails. They're giving the, the inmates the, the choice of either doing hard labor or doing meditation. And the ones that are doing the meditation, they're finding that the recidivism rate coming back into the, for crimes is falling out. Why? Because they, they, they're learning how to calm themselves in the moment by focusing on their breath. And we're going to do that. Awareness of body, I'm going to walk you guys through a body awareness and, and, and you're going to see what I mean. It helps release tension. You can even do it when you're walking. So, find a way to meditate. Make it a priority. Get comfortable. Notice your breathing. Give yourself some credit. Ease your way into, eat, into it, um, each activity. Be open to it. Let me just explain what meditation is real quick and what meditation isn't. Meditation is not, I'm perfectly calm, my mind is free of every thought. That is not meditation, okay? Meditation, is, and I'm gonna walk you through it, is the idea that you're in that peaceful place and then you lose it and then you be aware with the mindfulness and you pull yourself back to the peaceful place. So if you think about it, Meditation is the swing back and forth. It's not just the peaceful place. It's the back and forth. A lot of people say, oh, I tried meditation. I couldn't do it, so I quit. 
But meditation is the process of in and out. Kind of if you've ever been to a gym and you've done a curl, it's exactly like that. In and out, positive and negative, okay? And we're gonna go through that. So, progressive relaxation, real quick, can help you recognize your muscles are tense and teaches you to get your muscles back into a relaxed state. Helps you handle everyday stress. Part of the thing with MS is the effect it has on your body. Being able to be conscious of how your body feels in the moment is, is a huge benefit to this process, especially if you're a care provider. Two, the stress care providers are on, the guilt the person with MS feels about putting too much stress on the care provider. These are all things that can be dealt with through, uh, through um, uh, these progressive relaxations. Okay, so I want everybody who wants to try the exercise, you don't have to, but you know, hey, we're here. I drove from Tampa, humor me, okay? <laughs> So just get into a comfortable position. You don't have to change. You can just, all you just feed, I want you to just get into any comfortable position you can. You can just sit at the table, you don't have to. And I want you to just slowly close your eyes and I want you to simply take your attention to the air coming in and out of your nose. I want you to just feel the air coming in and out of your nose. Now remember, as you feel it, your mind may drift. Just be aware that your mind drifted and pull it back. Slowly feel, some people like to make themselves breathe. Some people like to just be aware of themselves breathing. Just feel the air coming in and out of your, breath, your uh, nose. Just count the breaths, just feel the air coming in and out. Let your mind drift off, pull it back. Now slowly I want you to take your attention down to the bottom of your feet. Just feel your feet. Feel the weight of your legs on the bottom of your feet. See so if you can feel your socks on, your shoes. Slowly move your attention up your shins to your knee, up your legs. See so if you can feel your body pressing on the chair. Any sounds outside the room, just let them come in and out. Move it up further. Now feel your upper body, your shirt, if you're wearing a, feel your shirt on your body. Slowly keep moving it up. Stop at your nose again. Just feel the air coming in and out of your nose. If your mind drifts away, just become aware that it drifted and pull it back. Keep going, move up to your eyes, your hair. See if you can feel your hair, your scalp, the hair growing out of your scalp. Now slowly start moving back down. Stop at each body part, your eyes. Stop at your nose. Feel the air again. Keep moving slowly down your face, down your neck. Move it down. If you're wearing a watch, see if you can actually feel the watch on your arm. Again, remember, if your mind drifts, it's perfectly fine. You need your mind to drift to pull it back. Keep going down again. Slowly move it back down, all the way back down to the bottom of your feet. Hold it at the bottom of your feet again. Now slowly bring it back up. And on your own, just move your awareness up and down your body. Just feel your, the body, your body presence in the chair. So now as you're doing this, I want you to just watch your thoughts. Just become aware of your thinking. What am I thinking about? If you've never done this before, it can be a little weird. Thinking about my thinking. What am I thinking about? What am I feeling? As you're doing that, I just want you to watch it. Like you're, no, no judgment. Just be aware of what you're thinking about.
Maybe there's some depression in there. I want you to just tell yourself if you're down, it's okay how I feel. It's okay that I'm scared. It's okay that I'm angry at this disease. It's okay how I feel. I just want you to make how you feel okay. If you're a care provider and you're under stress and you're having negative emotions towards the person you're caring for, I want you to tell yourself it's okay. I'm going to work on that. But it's okay that I'm feeling that. If you're scared about going to the doctor next week, just tell yourself it's okay. Just be aware of what you're thinking about. As you're doing that, I want you to just slowly come back to the air coming in out of your nose. Just feel the air, just focus. See if you can take one of those breaths and follow it all the way down your throat into your lungs. Every breath you take, you're relaxing more and more. Your muscles are relaxing. You're creating a healing state of mind. Just feel each breath. See if you can feel your nose hairs moving as your breath, your air comes in and out. Any distracting thoughts is perfectly fine. Just bring it back to the air coming in out of your breath. And then slowly I want you guys just to open your eyes when you're ready and come out of that. Interesting, huh? That's the relaxation exercise. That's what it feels like just to become aware of your body, to be aware of your thoughts, to be aware of how you're talking to yourself. Okay, self-talk is one of the key aspects that I work with my clients on. What are you saying to yourself? How much are you hating yourself, hating this disease in the moment? Being aware of that and working on it is one of the key aspects of what mindfulness is. Okay, another one is coloring. I'm sure you guys have heard of, I'm not going to do, we're not going to, we don't have time to do an exercise today, but coloring is coming out with some interesting studies about how it helps people stay centered in the moment, covering, uh, coloring uh, mandalas and, and different plaid patterns and things like that. That can help you relax. The key here that I, I want you guys to, to walk away from this talk today is how you relate to yourself is one of the most important relationships you have. Okay, and I know, you know, we're, there, there's some idea that, you know, God is supposed to be our, our primary relationship, and I, and I understand that, but think about this. If you hate yourself, what's your relationship with God going to be like? You've, we've got to become aware of how we think and feel in order to make those changes, okay? And that's what mindfulness will talk about. So, real quick, before we end here, gratitude. How many people are grateful they have MS? Exactly. Okay, that's good. You've reached a, a different level than a lot of people, but that's not what I'm here to tell you, okay? I know a lot of motivational speakers will come out and tell you, yes, come on, everybody. Yeah, no, come on, you know. No. The reality of the situation is, what was that? Being grateful is not, about MS is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the act of being great, grateful in general for whatever is in our life. Some people call it an attitude of gratitude. Why is that important? Again, interesting studies that are coming out about the effects of gratitude. I just grabbed a few last night. These are scientifically validated studies. Again, do not take my word for it. Gratitude opens the door to more relationships. Who likes having an ungrateful friend? Raise your hand. <laughs> exactly. That will open you up to more friendships. 
Gratitude improves physical health. Again, the state of our mind affects our physical body. Psychological health. Remember, your psychological health, your mental health is as important. And I'll, you know, granted I have a bias, of course, but I will say your psychological and mental health is as important, if not more important sometimes than your physical health, because your psychological health will affect how you feel. This is not just gobbledygook anymore. This is scientifically validated that the way our mind affects, the way we think affects the way our body heals, okay? Enhances empathy and reduces aggression. Gratitude is being used in prisons. What, what's empathy? Feeling for another person. It helped gratitude, being grateful in the moment, being grateful that we're all here today, grateful that we got here today safe and sound. I know getting here for some of you is a challenge. Being grateful that you made it here, okay? Helps you sleep better, helps improve self-esteem, and helps increase your mental strength. And we all know that with, a, with a, a, an illness like MS, sometimes we just don't feel strong, you know, and we don't feel like dealing with it, but one of the things, again, I encourage my clients to take is a different type of pill. It's not an actual pill. I call it the it's okay pill. Telling yourself, it's okay that I'm down. It's okay that I feel I'm angry. It's okay that I'm sad. It's okay. What that does is it reduces the negative emotions you're feeling. So let's say in this hand I've got all the feelings associated with having MS a lot of times. Are those negative or positive? A lot of times they're negative, exactly. In this hand I have hate, okay? So in this hand I have how we're feeling and in this hand I have hate. Now what do I have? Exactly, and I wish I could tell you that negative times a negative equals a positive in psychology, but it doesn't. It's, it, it's an exponential reaction. Your feelings will grow based on what you're bringing to them. And if you're bringing hate, they will grow. So I'm not saying to love them. I'm not saying, oh, let's love that I have MS. That's not what I'm saying. But in between love and hate is acceptance. Okay? Okay, acceptance. We have to accept that this is what, for whatever reason we've been given, drugs like Abagio, mindfulness, they can help us deal with it, okay? So um, that's basically my talk. I just want to leave you guys with one last piece. If your negative emotions are piling up, if you're feeling scared, if you're having dark emotions, and we know what those are, we don't like to talk about them, please talk them out, okay? Find a way, if it's somebody like me, or a clergy, or a brother or sister, somebody that you're close to, talk about how you're feeling. I know in this country, mental health, oh, we don't, Negative emotion is the single leading cause. What happened in, Vegas, in Las Vegas? What happens out in the world with crime? It's internalized negative emotion. Think about this real quick, and I'm not, I don't want the staff to hear this, but if all of a sudden you ate something and you're feeling sick, okay? Okay, but what's your body gonna do? Your body's going to try to get rid of it, but, but suppose you deal with it like you, you, you deal with your thoughts and emotions. Oh, no, 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 I'm going to keep it in. <laughs> Same thing, guys, with our negative thoughts and emotions. You keep them in, they will spread, they will affect your relationships, they'll affect your hope, they'll affect how medication or any treatment will affect you. Okay? So that's just the last little bit I want to leave you, is if you're feeling down, if you're feeling like giving up, if you're feeling those dark emotions, talk it out. Okay? Okay, guys. Well, thank you. Yes, my name is Clarissa Sera, and this morning we came to this meeting, a fantastic, awesome 
the technique, the mindfulness that the doctors went to all, it was medicine for my soul. I'm very thankful for that. And I will keep practicing what he say and dealing with everything is gonna be okay. I am a patient with MS, living with MS, and I came here to learn about mindfulness in dealing with MS. Um, I learned some helpful techniques and really further discovering that MS is the way of life. I, I found it very informative and I agree 100% with what he says and, and what he believes. Me, I had to hear it from him. What he thinks, what, what is he doing this for, for us. I think the talk was very, very good, very insightful, and it had a lot of message that a lot of people need to hear. People need to learn more about this and just not stay at home. They need to come out and learn what they can because there's a lot of positive message and a good influence, and it definitely influenced me, and I enjoyed being here. Dr. Stephen Walker's uh presentation today was awesome. It really brings a positive outlook into patients who are dealing with depression of MS and I think the presentation was out of this world like I've not seen before. So I hope that this can motivate a lot of people to keep fighting their disease and a positive and have a positive outlook in life. But in between love and hate is acceptance, okay? Okay, acceptance, acceptance, acceptance. If you would like to schedule or book Dr. Stephen Walker for a special event or speaking engagement, email us at licensedpsychology at gmail.com or call us at 971-533-4145.